Innovation Lab. We have Jessica Katanji Piri. Uh, Jessica is a social anthropologist who specializes in understanding the social cultural dimensions of food systems and beyond. As co PI of the ILCI Center of Innovation in Malawi, Jessica brings expertise in food and nutrition policy analysis in the natural, social, political, institutional, economic, cultural, and relations, and social cultural inequalities. Jessica is a senior lecturer of social work and a former deputy head of the Department of Human Ecology at the Malawi University of Agriculture and Natural Resources, and she's currently on sabbatical at Michigan State. So welcome, Jessica. Uh, once again, uh, thank you uh, for giving me this opportunity to be one of your speakers today. And uh, thank you, Mr. Bettinel, um, uh, Jessica, and I'm currently on a sabbatical leave with MSU. But I'm standing here representing the uh, Center of Innovation for Crop Improvement uh, in, in Central and Southern Africa, simply known as CCESA. Uh, that is housed uh, uh, at Luana but we have partners uh, in Cornell University, the uh, University Lab for Crop Improvement. Uh, so uh, CCS is one of the four innovation labs that has uh, been funded by Feed the Future uh, uh, program. And uh, under this uh, uh, um, uh, center, uh, Michael Schlitter is the one that is leading and I'm co-leading with our partners in Tanzania, Mozambique, and uh, Malawi from different institutions, NARIs, uh, research institutes, as well as other universities. Um, so our focus is on healthy uh, breeding, uh, inclusive healthy breeding. This is the topic that I will talk about uh, with you today and how inclusive it has been uh, under CCSA. Uh, first of all, before I venture into the inclusive uh, approach that we have done, I would like to also give us a little snapshot why healthy breeding, uh, apart from the crops that are uh, also there in Malawi and beyond. So at the time that we have, uh, we were developing this uh, 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 proposal for uh, uh, for the CCSA, there was no healthy uh, breeding program in Malawi that was active. Even though there have been initiatives in uh, by IITA and our other partners to developed carbon varieties that were improved. Um, in uh, all the countries, partner countries, that's Malawi, Mozambique, and Tanzania, we found out of the improved varieties of carbon that have been there, they have not been uh, receiving uh, a, a good uh, adoption rate uh, uh, locally. As you can see uh, from, uh, uh, from the slideshow, 90% of the carbon varieties that are uh, locally uh, being adopted, uh, I mean being used locally are uh, the local varieties, despite the efforts of the new varieties that have been introduced in these three countries. As such, we would like to think that we are doing something different uh, from the participatory, conventional participatory uh, plant breeding that have led to the generation of the copy uh, new varieties that have been introduced before. As such, we are taking a very um, interdisciplinary and a holistic approach that might also address issues that were addressed this morning, like localized um, approach or inclusive uh, development that has been uh, mentioned uh, in earlier presentation. So uh, by holistic and interdisciplinary, you see that our team are aiming to produce uh, culture varieties that are consumer preferred, market driven, uh, gender and youth sensitive, uh, as well as resilient to uh, issues of climate and uh, shocks, and uh, most importantly, that as we develop these varieties, they also address food and nutrition security of the people that we are developing the, uh, the, the varieties for. So we have uh, four objectives uh, to address uh, these issues, where we are uh, first of all uh, conducting a comprehensive gender value chain analysis to map out the different actors as well as preferences of the uh, different actors within the value chain of the cowpea uh, um, uh, crop within the three countries. We've also now taken an approach that this is going, uh, the objective one is the one that is going to form a foundation for our breeding 
uh, innovations, uh, rather than taking a bottom-up approach, we are saying that you have to ask the people that are the end users what are their preferences, what the traits they are preferring, so that they could help us to characterize and uh, come up with the classes that are really uh, usable for the end users. And from this, that's where we develop the uh, and select uh, copy lines that we think are be, going to be responsive uh, to the uh, to the needs of the people. Uh, as an, a complementary also um, objective, we know that uh, uh, developing these uh, 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 lines without even a, a, a building capacity of uh, students as well as strengthening the capacity of the institution that we are involved in will, be, uh, uh, will not last uh, to the end of the project. So the capacities are being built. Uh, we have a one PhD a student and five master students across the different countries, as well as that infrastructure development is being done in the different countries that we are involved. Uh, so uh, zooming in, what have we so far done on the gender value chain analysis? Uh, I have to point at this point that our work is ongoing, but we have made strides that we can confidently share with you uh, this afternoon. So we, uh, uh, we are we have done a multidisciplinary kind of uh, research. <laughs> okay, yeah, so we have taken a mixed method approach into our multidisciplinary research, where first of all, we have done a, a, a farmer and consumer trade uh, preference survey, where farmers were consulted individually through a structured questionnaire and I will try to give you a snapshot of each of the approaches that we've used just to get a feel of what is uh, coming up. Uh, this, is part of, this is the main part of our quantitative um, methodology, but also on the same quantitative methodologies we've also done um, uh, uh, choice experiments that are, com are complementing the, the other methodologies that we have done. So uh, basically, um, I know it's a, it's a quite uh, intense uh, results that I'm going to see, but I'm just going to highlight uh, some of the few things that are coming up. For instance, grain, uh, grain, grain yield as a prominent trading cowpea has been seen that to be a first priority for both men and women in a certain district of Malawi called Salima. Uh, much of this is um, something that is seen, you will also see that there are differences. The second choice for a uh, trade preference that is shown uh, for female uh, farmers in, in this area is cooking time. And for the men, they are choosing uh, uh, grain taste as one of their uh, uh, preferences. So obviously you can see that there are differences within the gender uh, 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 divide. And we go beyond to see even what is happening. That's in Malawi, in Mozambique, a similar trend is coming up. Though some of the differences are subtle, but still, they are also on gender divide. So uh, you can see that a, a grain size as a trade uh, is uh, mostly preferred by uh, um, under female farmers and their young female farmers. Even though there are subtle differences that all the uh, male, young male, young females, young um, uh, uh, under male and under females, are also choosing this, uh, this as a very important trait. But uh, there are uh, some, um, uh, um, there, there are some trait, there are some trends that are shown that the, the gender lines are really uh, shown to be prominent. And similarly, it's also shown like green color for, uh, for young males and uh, adult males is something that uh, they are rated high versus what the young females and young uh, other than the females are choosing. Uh, basically, the take home of this is that um, <coughs> men are choosing mostly the, uh, the trees that are market driven, that are fetching more, uh, more um, the, 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 the cowpea variety that are fetching more money on the market, while females are choosing the traits that are um, very convenient for home consumption and food security. This is not to land it all, but as you can see, the the other slide that I will present, there are some differences and some uh, assemblies that would guide our breeders to develop lines that might be uh, uh, 
specific for specific groups of people, but also maybe generate lines that are inclusive of the different needs of specific uh, uh, segments. So I think I've already uh, presented this. So So uh, just to quickly mention uh, uh, the other uh, methodologies that we've done uh, to complement the quantitative methodologies, we've done uh, county value chain mapping across all the three countries. We've done key informant interviews as well as focus group discussions. The bottom line has been to be widely consultative from uh, the county value chain, from uh, production to consumption and all the actors that have been uh, map within this chain are being consulted for the same. So we've been uh, contacting traders, uh, agro-dealers, um, as well as uh, processors who are doing cowpea, uh, who are dealing with cowpea in one way or another. And uh, uh, these are some of our pictorial uh, evidence of what we have done so far. Uh, so in, uh, in Almost concluding, uh, our preliminary impressions are definitely showing that there are differences in contextual settings that readers should be aware of in terms of uh, taking their uh, next step to produce inclusive varieties that are addressing needs or in the, of the people on the ground. So can't, there are country differences. Uh, we have uh, uh, matrilineal and patrilineal uh, settings in countries like Malawi. There are also some differences in there. Uh, land holding sizes, where there are small land holding sizes, they basically choose varieties that might be intercropped. Uh, well, although that have uh, uh, big land holding sizes, they might choose varieties that you can be easily so crop. And uh, to go particularly in the traits themselves, like light seeded, um, late maturing varieties can be even associated to a group of people like female farmers. Uh, while small seeding and early maturing that are maybe market um, uh, demanded are being chosen by male and youthful farmers. At the end of the day, we are looking at utilization of household and use of these traits that are making it an impact on uh, uh, a big uh, contribution to how people are choosing the preferences of the cowpea varieties that they are, uh, are liking. So in, a, in, all, in all in all, I think the, the things that we are learning is that the use of different methodologies, the, uh, the use of or the integration of different disciplines and expertise uh, to complement each other's effort, and the, uh, the, the engagement of different actors, more especially the end users themselves, the communities, is going to come up with a meaningful innovation that are applicable for the end users in the inclusive cowpea breeding. Thank you very much for your